Hi everyone, let's go over my medium time frame and low time frame bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with the medium time frame more bullish scenario where we are looking for a three wave corrective structure after which we then expect continuation. Now there's two options over here. We have a WXY or an ABC. Now currently on the chart, I'm looking for this to be a WXY over here, which is a three, three, and then you're looking for another three wave structure to the downside. The maximum target for a wave Y, however, is the 1.618, with the most common target being between the 1 and the 1.236 trend-based Fib extension taken from the high to the low of W to the high of wave X. The 1.618 is also a rare target, which has now been hit, which is then a maximum target, and you really want to see a move to the upside and not continuation to the downside. The problem, however, is the subdegree count inside this wave structure. Because if we look at this structure over here, we have to count a three-wave structure because a wave Y is a three-wave move. That means that if this is an impulse to the downside, we're going to be looking for an ABC structure and then an AB and then you want to see another five-wave structure to the downside. Now this being an ABC and then finishing over here was valid. It hit the 0 0.618 trend-based fib extension from the high to the low of A to the high of B, which is a rare target for a wave C. But the fact that price now took the low once again is lowering the probabilities of this being an ABC. And if this is going to be a wave C, then we're looking at a one, two, three, four, five wave move because the 1.618 over here is then a target for a wave 3 in a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which as you can see is far below the wave Y target. And if we think about potentially a diagonal, something like this, then we're talking about an ending diagonal because we have an A, B and then an ending diagonal in a wave C. And an ending diagonal is only allowed to have a three waves in each of the separate wave structures. So a three, 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 three. But that is already invalidated with this push to the downside over here, which very much looks like an impulse as well as what we have on the lower time frames at the moment. So not looking too great, uh, these scenarios over here. And if we then look at, for example, an ABC scenario while well, I'm going to remove everything uh, from this particular WXY scenario as it doesn't look that likely in an A, B and then a wave C scenario we're thinking about an expanding flat so in this particular scenario this wave C can be a five wave structure and then a one two three four five but the problem here is this wave three it's not allowed to be the shortest wave in an impulsive structure and that is important because if we take a trend based fib from the high to the low to the end of the range we just had then the one to one is the invalidation target of a potential wave c at 28k so if price would move towards the downside and hit this level then this being a c wave is also invalidated usually the third wave is the highest volume, most impulsive, biggest wave in an impulsive structure. But if this is a wave C, then we have again, one, two, three, four, and this wave five is not allowed to hit this level. That is the invalidation of a potential ABC. And if that level gets hit, then the probabilities for the more bearish scenario are going to increase. This bearish scenario over here is looking for a expanding flat in an A, B and then a wave C to the downside where in wave B we also have another expanding flat in a three wave structure A, B, C where we have this five wave move to the upside. After wave B, you then expect a five wave move to the downside in a wave C, where the most common target area for C is between the two 1.618s, sitting between 23.4k and 22k. And if we look at the target areas, then around this wave C target area, you can see we do have a blue box for some additional support, sitting between 28.8k and 22.6k. If we look at this volume profile, it starts to become very, very, very important because price broke out to the upside, backtested the value area high of this volume profile over here from this part of the range, all the lines after I uh, put on the chart myself. So it's a volume profile till this part over here. And you can see the value area high has been tested. Then we had a bit of a move to the upside, but we might be on the edge now of losing the value area high. And if you lose the value area high over here, then there's a high probability of going to the point of control or the value area low sitting at 27.9K or 26.2K. Potentially a backtest can then also create a short setup as we are then simply trading the range really. So you have a move to the downside, a backtest, and the backtest could be a potential short entry when trading ranges where the stop loss is somewhere safely above. And then you're gonna be looking for a move to the downside 
downside of course no financial advice you trade you with whatever your entry requirements are maybe you are looking for a local market structure change over here or more bearish cvd divergences whatever it is but in a range environment once the value area high is broken the point of control and the value area low are the next r areas to look for and if you look at the additional support areas then around the point of control we don't have too much support the real big support box i have is between 26.8k and 27.4k and below that at the value area low between 26.2k and 26.4k if we go to the low time frame scenarios start with the more bullish one then over here we also see a little bit of a problem because we move to the downside in a straight line and as explained in my video yesterday if price is moving down in a straight line the probabilities of this being an impulse increase and therefore the end of the corrective structure the probabilities for that also increase now in this bullish scenario we then look for a w x and then a y or we look for an a b c where the target for wave y is between the one and the 1.236 and for wave b is over here now as you can see it has been nicely respected for y we have closure inside this area that's good and for wave b we have a wick in this area now it has to be said that this wick over here on the lower time frame is not visible on other charts. So if I go to Bybit over here, then you can see on this chart, we don't have a wick. And if I go to the Binance or the Bitstamp, sorry, this is the Bitstamp chart, and over here there is no wick as well. But on my Coinbase chart, we do have a wick. So that could be potentially a scam wick as we like to call them and there's quite a high probability of filling scam wicks doesn't mean it has to go down immediately but there is a high probability of filling these now in this scenario inside b or x we are then looking for a three-way structure in the wxy to the downside but that then also means that this has to be a three-way structure and that's the problem over here because if we are looking for a zigzag, we're looking for a 535, which is a three wave structure, but this now looks like a five wave structure. One, two, three, four, five wave move to the downside. If we look for any other like three wave structures, it becomes very difficult indeed. It looks more like a one, two, one, two, and then a three to the downside in an impulsive structure. Definitely doesn't look like a flat or a triangle, which were two of the scenarios we were looking for yesterday when price was ranging over here which were basically the only two options for a blue wave Y. But instead of creating a flat like this or a triangle, price moved to the downside, which of course gives probabilities to the more bearish scenario that we have. If we then do go to that bearish scenario, we're looking for a WXY with inside wave Y, a very cheeky WXY, so a three, three and then another three wave structure where this high has not been taken we have a triple top over here that is what's cheeky about this scenario and then price moves to the downside in an impulsive structure so we have a wave one diagonal two another one two and then a three to the downside the reason you can't label this an impulse in a one two three four and then eventually a wave five so like this is because there's overlap between one and four that's not what you want to see so that gives higher probabilities of this being a wave three after a double one two to the downside that also means that the invalidation of this scenario is currently sitting at 29.3k because you don't like to see this level taken you first want the impulse to continue to the downside to finish the lower degree wave three four and five in white to then finish finish three in blue four in blue and five in blue but then again if we look at the target areas then below this wick over here there is not much support all the way down to the support box that i already mentioned just now all the bearish cvd divergences have played out so we had big bearish cvd divergences more local and even over here on the very low time frame bearish cvd divergences all of these now have played out as this low as well as this low has been taken so the bearish cvd divergences as well as the bullish really more locally are completely neutralized there's not much going on this is the chart on the 15 minute so this is the range over here you can see the bearish cvd yellow line higher lows or a higher highs on the yellow line but a lower high on price and also here more locally before the drop yesterday lower high on price higher high on the cvd bearish local cvd divergence price moving down and then throughout my night we had a push towards the upside again creating bearish cvd divergences over here with this high lower high on price higher high on the cvd more bearish cvd divergences and of course if you continue to see this there's literally no reason to long really i mean 
CVD divergences show market orders being absorbed by bigger limit long or short positions. And yeah, the shorts are, or the longs, market longs are being absorbed for pushes towards the downside. More locally, the CVD looks pretty crazy. So we have over here the yellow line right moving to the upside and the blue line over here actually moving to the downside but after a after a, an impulsive move like this i never really look at the cvd it's not really too trustworthy i prefer to see a bit longer like a bit more of a range before i start looking at the cvd divergences again now therefore the probabilities if we zoom out for the medium time frame as well as the low time frame are the following so on the medium time frame i'm feeling neutral at the moment or even maybe geared towards a more bearish scenario but neutral as it stands reason being that on the medium time frame we didn't yet reach the uh, like maximum target over here we are looking for a five wave structure to the downside so if this is a five wave structure to the downside in a one two three four five we didn't yet hit the invalidation being the one to one of that wave three which is sitting as just mentioned at oops let's put it on the chart at 28k right this is an important level however if price would move to the downside then there is not too much support over here around that level for a potential wave five which then increases the probabilities really of moving towards the downside so currently neutral till invalidation then bearish but of course what's happening over here and this being a very short wave three is not really bullish so i suppose that I wrote neutral but it's like a bit more towards the bearish side and then if price would move towards the downside we have to look at the reaction of at the target box but also how it moves towards the target box and on the low time frame then the probabilities are more geared towards the bearish scenario mainly because it is very difficult to count a three-wave structure over here it looks more like an impulsive structure to the downside and if this is an impulsive structure to the downside we are looking at this range to be finished in then a wxy scenario for continuation to the downside i hope this video was helpful or valuable to you please check out the most recent educational video i've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion which is the cvd and for now thanks for watching and subscribing and i'd like to see you at the next one bye bye